Hello, Dr. G here. Today I want to talk about an autoimmune disease, multiple sclerosis. This is something I see often in my practice. And I just want to talk, give you some of my insights on this disease, why it's uh, so prevalent, increase in prevalence. They estimate that four to 500,000 people in the United States have the disease right now. It's in women about two to three to one to men, so it more commonly affects women. They estimate that over 2 million people worldwide have it. It's interesting though that they don't know exactly how many people have it. There haven't been any good studies recently to see exactly. I think there's more people with it than the 400 to 500,000, although I could be wrong. That, that's a lot of people. So MS, there's not a particular known cause. There, there's some issues that are correlated with it like Epstein-Barr virus, uh, huge uh, stress or trauma in your life are correlated, but they don't know the cause. It's an autoimmune disease where our immune system attacks a component of our nervous system, the central nervous system, and so we get uh, central nervous system uh, manifestations of the disease. Things like your vision can go bad, you can become paralyzed, you can become numb, you can get vertigo, you can have fatigue, you can have pain, uh, muscle spasms. So it's not a good disease. People that have this disease are highly motivated to try to do something about it. So the drug companies have stepped in. Originally, they took immune, they uh, proposed taking immune suppressant drugs and, and they helped the disease, things, things like corticosteroids. Uh, then they developed the interferon and then the monoclonal antibodies. So these drugs are now the mainstay of treatment. A drug is nice for the drug company because it doesn't cure the disease. You still have the disease. You need to take the drug each and every month or year or, you know, however common the dose is. You need to take it basically for the rest of your life. So the drug companies love diseases like multiple sclerosis, and they pour billions of dollars into developing these drugs to treat one small component of our immune system. That's what the monoclonal antibodies do. They treat one small component of our immune system that hopefully that will create less side effects so that we can treat the disease with the fewest side effects. And, you know, that sounds good. I think we would be much better off if we spent those billions of dollars trying to find the cause and then trying to figure out how to address the cause. But to take an example of the multiple sclerosis drugs, they cost now on an average of about $70,000 per year. $70,000 per year. So women, typically the age of onset of multiple sclerosis is age 20 to age 50. Although you could get it at any age, those are the common ages of presentation. So let's say a woman gets multiple sclerosis at age 40, and then they live to be 85. So they take the drug, the drug for treatment, the, the mainstream drug, hopefully covered or partially covered by your health insurance. That means all of us pay for the multiple sclerosis drug, not just the people with multiple sclerosis, because part of it is paid for by health insurance. So if, if a woman took that for 40 years, 40 plus years, the total cost for the drug treatment in her lifetime would be three and a quarter million dollars. Then if you took all 400,000 people with multiple sclerosis and treated them all with that drug, and let's say they all lived an average of 40 years on the drug treatment, you know, you would hope they would have such a long life to live to their 80s. It would cost well over a trillion dollars. So this is one disease, and we've got all kinds of autoimmune diseases, but this is just one of them. One disease and drug treatment over a trillion dollars. Do you think that would possibly bankrupt the healthcare system? Do you think maybe a better way is find the cause 
Of course, when there's no incentive to find the cause. If you find the cause, you can't make a trillion dollars. That's the bottom line. It's really, really sad the way medicine is. I mean, I realize that, you know, it's a free country and we have the profit motive, but this isn't free market at work. This is a monopoly because of the FDA and because of the medical practice laws. Only certain people can treat MS, only MDs, and then they have to follow the standard of care, which the FDA approves the drugs. They don't approve anything else. They don't approve the natural treatments that might be helpful. Now, I'm not saying natural treatments work better than the drugs, uh, things like coenzyme Q10 or low-dose naltrexone, uh, uh, the marijuana compounds. Those are other alternative treatments to multiple, multiple sclerosis, and there's others. I'm a big fan of preventive medicine. My feeling is you can prevent it. One of the things you could do is really up your sun exposure. Get out in the sun, the first morning sun, the mid-morning sun, the midday sun, and the setting sun. I think that would do a lot to prevent multiple sclerosis because we know from studies that the further away from the equator you are, the greater your risk of multiple sclerosis. In other words, it's rare at the equator. It's common at the high latitudes like the Scandinavian countries, I think, have the, the greatest incidence of multiple sclerosis, the furthest away from the sun. So sun exposure likely prevents it. But what do doctors tell you? What does the healthcare system tell you? And what have patients bought into? I see it every day. People, today, I'm out there. Everyone I see walking, or not everyone, but I'd say 8 out of 10, 9 out of 10, are completely covered. Beautiful day in the 70s. No reason to wear long sleeves, gloves, hats, totally obscuring the sun. Big sunglasses, totally obscuring the sun. You're asking for multiple sclerosis if you go out for a walk like that. You're asking for it. The other one is fake light. The other fake light or fake light tells us it's noon at 9 p.m. That messes up our circadian controls. That's another factor that will contribute to you getting an autoimmune disease. So here, getting back to nature is one way to prevent multiple sclerosis. Another way is to deplete deuterium. Uh, deuterium is a long story. I'm gonna make another video about that soon, but deuterium is the heavy isotope of hydrogen, and it has effects where it decreases our energy. So the latest research shows that MS is a metabolic disease, or it's related to the decrease of energy production in our mitochondria. And, and that's why the disease progresses is because it's a mitochondrial disease. One of the big factors that contributes to mitochondrial disease is a problem with heavy hydrogen. And what that does is causes mitochondrial dysfunction. So what can you do? You can lower your heavy hydrogen in your system. This may sound crazy, but if you get your deuterium parts per million down to 130 or lower in your tissues and in your body, get the heavy hydrogen down to an optimal level that you will never get multiple sclerosis and you'll never get cancer or you'll never get the other modern diseases that plague us right now. So again, I'll be talking a lot more about that in in the future and explain exactly how do you get your deuterium down to 130 parts per million. Well, you got to learn how, and I will teach it to you here. This is Dr. G. Thanks so much for watching. I wish you the best of health. Please share this video. Please like this video. If you have any comments, make them below. If you have a question, I'll try to answer it. Um, down below. Thanks a lot.